Good morning, you absolute legends. So today's video is going to be a cheeky little interview with Chris Harper, who came second in the national championships. We're gonna interview Chris first. He rode an amazing race, and he's such a talent on a bicycle. And the other interview is Troy Herfoss from the, towards the end of the video. Now, Troy is a, uh, a motorcyclist. He's a MotoGP champion who has become a bike rider, and I can tell you, a pretty good bike rider. I remember seeing this bloke riding up the hill on his own in the last couple of laps, laps of the national championships, and he had this Terminator type, like he just looked like a machine. So we caught up with Troy, had a quick chat with him, and uh, and that is pretty much it for the, for the video today. Uh, I won't be doing any more vlogs as of today, through to next Monday, simply because we're gonna be doing the pilgrimage ride, so tomorrow morning we leave 4 a.m. So I'm gonna do a lot of live streams on YouTube, I'm gonna do a lot of live streams on Facebook. So if you're not following me on Facebook, get on there. If you're not following me on YouTube, get on there. Make sure you click the notifications bell on both of those so that you can get the live streams. And I'm, and I'm gonna stop rambling, let's get into the video. So word on the street uh, has it that you know, you're know you such a talent, you're probably gonna get picked up by a World Tour team. Has anyone been knocking on the door? No, not yet. I, uh, yeah, I'm not expecting anything like that anytime soon. So um, just stay focused on what I'm in control of and uh, go to the races. And I'm sure if, if I'm good enough to get the results, then I think that'll happen itself. Yeah, yeah. So you, you mentioned briefly uh, about the selection for the UniSA thing and that it was a bit of a, a kerfuffle. So what were you told and who were you told by? Yeah, so after the road race, um, we, uh, we were told by our manager, Andrew Christie Johnson, that uh, probably most of us uh, couldn't couldn't or wouldn't be eligible for selection just because we weren't on that, uh, you know, doping control. Um, which, yeah, we're actually a bit concerned that, you know, we weren't too sure who in the team would be able to do it, which was a bit disappointing given we've been given five spots already as part of the new um, new rules cycling Australia will bring you in with the winning team for the NRS. Right. It's a um it's it's a bit of a bizarre I mean how do you feel about that? You've had you've missed out on an opportunity to, to ride a, a world tour race because of a clerical error. Yeah, it definitely <laughs> that sucks. There's I mean there's nothing I can do about it. So um I'm not going to be too down about it and I'm just going to focus on the next race. And um, But, yeah, it does suck. And especially even if, you know, the team in previous years, if the team hadn't been given um, the five spots, I think given my ride on Sunday, I probably would have still, you know, done enough to warrant a spot in the UniSA Uni team, how it was set up in the past. So that's a bit disappointing um, in a way for me personally um, but yeah it's also disappointing for the for the team um, like we've got plenty of sponsors coming coming down for the the week and um, the yeah it's just a bit of a shame that we can only send four out of our five riders because of just what sounds like a bit of a silly area error on cycling Australia's behalf. Yeah, that's right. Did you have any engagement with Bradley McGee about this? Do you ring up and say, or did he see you and say, "Hey, sorry, nothing"? No, I haven't heard anything from Cycling Australia. Um, just seen a couple, couple posts released about uh, about the team and uh, also what they realised with the. Uh, the new rule that the UCI brought in, but I haven't heard anything from them personally. Um, yeah, haven't haven't got anything like that. Yeah, okay. Have you spoken to, you know, obviously Cyrus uh, Monk won the under-23 championships. Did you, have you, do you have much engagement with Cyrus and did, do you know how he's feeling about it? Yeah, no, I don't know. I don't really know Cyrus um, that well. Yeah. Uh, just obviously see him at races and all that and obviously it's disappointing for him as well yeah. um when the, the guy who normally wins under 23 nationals is given a spot as well so yeah he's in the same boat uh and actually originally when i first first heard the news i said oh well at least cyrus will be fine because of his stage year with cannondale i thought he would have been put on the whereabouts program so i thought oh well at least you know 
he'll be fine. But I read an article, I think it was with cycling tips this afternoon, that he filled it all out and then Wada came back and said, nah, stage years don't want to be don't need to be on it. So that's pretty rough luck that. <laughs> oh yeah, good on you, mate. Well listen, I just wanted to have a quick chat with you for the vlog. Thanks for coming on board, man. What's next for no, you mate, now? Thanks. What are you gonna push on to now? Um, I fly uh I'm yeah, lucky enough that Andrew's actually given me a spot in the New Z- uh, the team for New Zealand Cycle Classic. So I fly out of Adelaide on Monday um, and I'll race over there for the week and then hopefully come back to Australia and uh, I think I'm down at this stage to do the Herald Sun Tour as well. So still got a good block of racing in, which is awesome. Yeah, good on you, dude. Well, good luck. And uh, I'm looking forward to keeping track and watching your performances uh, in, oh, the, in the next couple of years, man. Oh, awesome. Thanks for having me. All right, Troy. Thanks for being on the Cycling Moven YouTube channel, mate. Uh, you had an outstanding ride on the weekend. Can you tell us a little bit about the uh, the last few laps? Yeah, thanks, Mark. It's been a pretty cool couple of days, really, just um, trying to understand what happened to myself really um obviously i'm i'm a, a passionate cyclist and sort of don't compete at a professional level or anything i just love doing it and trade hard for it and and um yeah sort of getting in that break and and doing all that kind of stuff at, at first was sort of you know just i was out there doing it and you know i was sort of a dead man walking really just trying to hang in as long as i could and and see what would happen at the end but once i got to the end of the race and and we got the three laps to go and I was getting time checked to say that the, the, the bunch was a little unorganised and I was gaining time, losing time. And and then when um, and then when Alex Edmondson and Chris Harper jumped across to me, I sort of got a big heap of energy then because I realised that, you know, the bunch was actually working hard and, um, and it was pretty serious business at that, at that point. And, um, and I felt great at the end of the race too. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't dying as such. Um, I just can't climb the hills as fast as they do. But, yeah, it was it was pretty amazing feeling coming up, you know, bunning on on my own. Just the the crowd. I'd obviously googled me as the race went on, and my name was getting shouted everywhere, and it was just an amazing experience. Mate, I uh, I have to admit, right in one of my blogs, I was like, look at this guy. I can't I can't remember his name, and the guy behind me said it's Troy Hervos, and I was like, and I started googling you, and all these motorcycle things come up, and I thought this guy has, and then someone told me. You know, you've gone from motorcycle racing, which is just really cool in itself, to cycling, and you're dominating. What a great story that is! Yeah, it's it is really cool, and obviously, it's not like I've just turned up at nationals to, to have a ride. Like I, I've been riding bikes for a lot of years now, and and obviously love it. And and the thing I love about the cycling is, um, you know, on my own engine, I've raced motorcycles my whole life, and and you win and lose races on the motorbike based on the performance of the bike a lot of the time. So it's great to go to a race on the push bike, knowing that the effort you put in is where you get out. You were going up that hill. You attacked in the last couple of laps, and you were solo, and people were just screaming at you. I remember looking at your face as you were going up. You must have been pushing what I don't know, 450, 500 watts up that hill. Do you know? When I attacked, yeah, but um, generally, yeah, generally it was about 370, 380 in the breakaway. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm looking at your face, and I'm like, this guy's not hurting. Like you just, you look like a robot. Um, is that something you're trained to do? Or you try not to show your rivals your, your pain or? Um, yeah, I've always, I've always been into the, the whole poker face thing. I think it, it does, it does bluff your way through a lot of, a lot of races. I think, um, because I've been in many races where I've been in much worse shape than I was in the weekend. So the bluff's always got to be good. Now, how, how long have you been racing for now on, on push bikes? Um, yeah, I, it's, I done my first NRS race in 2011. And I, and that, I didn't race again at NRS level until about 2015, and um, I done Tour of Toowoomba and, and half a battle on the border. Yeah. And, um, yeah. I've, I've basically just done a state open here and there. I've done a few mountain bike events, and I just love riding bikes, really. Yeah, yeah. You love riding motorbikes, or you love riding push bikes? What's... So, yeah, it's a, it's a hard one, isn't it? <laughs> like I love riding motorbikes. I've done it all my life, and um, and now it's a job for me as well. So I, I make an income out of it. But I'm I'm so passionate about the bike. I just um, sometimes wish I had picked it up when I was 10 years old, not 22. Yeah, you rode an incredible race as we've already discussed. But have you had anyone knocking on the door? You know, any 
any of the teams sort of that you know that you could tell us about? Yeah, I, I honestly haven't had any any teams like contact me for a ride or anything. Maybe maybe it's maybe it's because they know that I'm I'm racing the motorcycle full time. But um, yeah, I mean I I did. It was only one day. You know what I mean? Like it, you know, I, I don't think there's. I would never say I was better than some of the pros are there. So it's on the day I got lucky. I got in the break and, and I had energy at the end of the race. But, um, yeah, I don't think it warrants um, getting any big contracts out of it. <laughs> I don't know, man. To be able to, to be at the front of the bike race, there was a lot of good bike riders going out the back. So um, it was it was pretty incredible, really. But, um, what I will say is you've done the race three times before. So you've obviously clearly made improvements every year. How have you done that? You know, for like tips for beginner riders, what would you say to them? Um, yeah, so the first time I done it, I, I got a, a coach for that for that um, few months, Kev Polton, who actually went on to big things with Zwift and Matt Heyman, and um, and he helped me through it and, and got me going and, and taught me a lot. And that first year, I went in um, and I was in really good shape, but I was too heavy, and I, and I hadn't replicated the climb enough i'd just done a lot of k's and i was really fit i probably would have been better off going to melbourne and warnable but um i didn't finish the race i made it halfway and, and i left there pretty demoralized the next year um i decided i was going to lose five kilos for one and um and just start replicating that climb and, and i basically just went to strava and looked at every every rider that finished that race and um and sort of tried to work out what power they power to weight ratio they had yeah. And I just started replicating the climb at five watts per kilo last year and, and um and then I finished the race. I actually was in decent shape last year. I missed the break but and, yeah. um but I ticked that box and I finished the race and then this year it was the same again but I actually hooked up with Joe Cooper this year. He moved to the Gold Coast and, and um we organised my girlfriend's brother, Hayden, to, to get a scooter for us. And, yeah. um I think the biggest thing was was Joe and I done um three or four days where we and another young fella, Connor, who went really well in the under 23s too. We all three of us done a few really solid uh, race simulations behind the bike, and I think that's what um that's what really got that final. The bit of icing on the cake was the motorbike, I think. So the motor pacing, so motor pacing's where it's at. I hear you. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Is that what it helped me? I think it was. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's you know, it's interesting that you know you're not quite. Sure, and I suppose there's, there's probably smart people out there that do this all the time that would know that it probably did give you a good advantage. Yeah, I, I think, in my opinion, like 90% of that race, the people that enter, they get themselves in really good shape. Like, I think mentally, the motor pacing helped me. Um, doing the race runs, hitting a, hitting a six, seven minute climb 10, 15 times, um, having that confidence to know you could do it. And then, like, for me, getting into that race, like, I mean, I've been in pressure situations before on the motorbike, and, you know, obviously I know that Richie Ford and Simon Gerrans and them guys are far stronger than me, but in the same sentence, I'm, I'm not so, I'm not exactly scared of them, because they're only going to beat me, that's the only problem. So my, my goal was just to get as far ahead while they weren't prepared to, to spend any energy and then figure out what to do in the last half of the race. Yeah, yeah. You've uh, I, I've seen that you've done a few Zwift sessions and stuff. There was a couple of people that commented that you've done some Kiss Swift racing. Uh, do yeah. you think that's helped you in any way? Yeah, I sort of didn't want to tell anyone too much about that. But no, no, <laughs> no Zwift's, like a, Zwift's actually a pretty big tool for me. Um, even though I live on the Gold Coast and it's really hot, um, I do finish a, a lot of the sessions I was finishing with a few tempo five minute efforts at sort of 40 degree heat. And um, I don't know if you've done that before, but it's, you know, it's if not you've got good. Of 200 watts, then you're doing about 110 watts at threshold heart rate at the end of a heat session. So I think that's another thing I did in this year, that the training at heat. And that was a tip from Kev Fulton. And he sort of told me, to, he actually told me to start doing some double sessions in there. And, and I, I, was, I wasn't doing too many double sessions, but I was finishing a few rides with a, a bit of um, time on the ergo. Yeah, there you go, guys. There you go. The indoor trainer, the indoor trainer's where it's at. It's not much fun, but and everyone says to me, "Why do you do it?" But like, I just find it, it's so much bang for your buck. Yeah, that that program's getting so cool now. Yeah, you can get on there, talk to your mates, you can race everyone. And you know what? If you, I've got some friends that are that are getting into cycling, and, and you know, I can go on there with them, bump my weight up to 120 kilos, and all of a sudden their threshold's the same as mine. And I can go and race my mates that, you know, on the road, they wouldn't 
dream of going for a ride with me, but I could get on there and smash around the island with them. So true, isn't it? Yeah. Mate, I would love to talk with you more. We're going to keep this video short for today, but um, just just in reference. But I'd love to have more of a chat with you at some stage, I think. And I think the viewers would love to hear more about your motorcycle racing because you've won quite a few championships, haven't you? Yeah, so three Australian, uh, three Australian championships, one in the, the smaller class and two in the premier class. Wow. All right. Well, I think we'll get you on next time for just an exclusive chat with Troy Herfoss. But for now, mate, thanks for coming on. Yeah, I appreciate you having me. I really do. Thank you.